All right, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Shauna Solomon. And if this is your first time here, make sure that you subscribe and then also hit that notification button so that you can get notified when I post content. My content here, even though it looks like I do hair, I don't. I'm only doing my hair because I'm getting ready to do some content. Um, but here, what we are going to be talking about on my page is one, my favorite fashion, two, business. And how I kind of pull all of that together and how I've become a successful entrepreneur by utilizing both the things that I love, which is fashion and business. So make sure that you stay tuned and I am going to get this, continue to get this hair together and I'll be back. Welcome. All right, y'all. So I had already started doing some of this before I decided or realized that my um, camera was gone. So right now what I'm doing is just measuring the track around the top part of my hair just and just kind of like aligning it on how I want it to fall because that just helps it helps me style it easier when the tracks are aligned. I'm not sure why it took me so long to get this glue out, but I will say that it looks like I'm putting a lot of glue on, but I'm actually just pouring a little bit and then I kind of drag it because I don't like it there being a whole bunch of glue on my um, my hair, especially since I didn't have anything protecting it outside of the right, gel. I'm doing the same thing I did before, which is just aligning it with the last track that I put in there and again this is helping because when I go to cut it I don't want there to be any spaces in between the um the little bit of layers that's going to go through and I also make sure I press down because we don't want it lifting up I did a horrible job at um molding my hair or I molded my hair last night and I didn't really put a whole bunch in it so that's why you see some little pieces sticking up but that's okay. It's still going to be flat. And at this point, I was kind of figuring out if I was going to leave it long or um, cut it short. Because sometimes I'll go in and cut it as I am styling it. But I decided against that. And I just decided to pull out the 10-inch hair. This other, those other two were 12-inch. And again, I buy two different lengths. So that it makes it easier for me to cut it and it's kind of like already layered or on its way to being layered when you put the hair on it that way. So again, I'm right here just measuring where I am going to put the hair. And at this point, I am getting ready to start angling the hair towards coming down into my face. Now, the reason why I wait until I'm about four tracks in is because I do not like the front of my hair to be bulky in this style. You can kind of see how the style is coming together. Um, I am now adding the second the second track in there. And you can see that it's starting to take shape already. You can see the length, the longer length in the front on the sides and how it is coming around in my face and it's not as long so I don't have to do as much cutting. I do this all the way around until it's time for me to do the closure. Sometimes I do um, not do it all the way around in like a horseshoe depending on how full I want my front to be but I am doing this all the way around just because of the look that I'm going for with this particular style. And you just want to keep going all the way around until you have enough room for your closure. Um, you do want to make sure that the tracks are pretty close. You don't want to see anything peeking through. And again, I'm just pressing hard. I'm getting tired, but I'm almost there. So I'm just kind of making sure to see if there's enough room for me to make my own closure because nope i didn't buy one so y'all get to see me close this up all right now that this is how i want it let's get into this closure 
Um, I had to measure it out. It depends on how big your closure is going to be. But you want to make sure that you put enough glue on it because and this might be a little bit messy. But you are going to roll this into like a circle. It definitely gets messy. So just watch how I roll this up. And these dumb nails didn't help. These nails are longer, so it's taken me a little bit more to roll this. And you want to make sure that when you're rolling, that you're rolling it tight because of what this next step is going to be. Keep rolling. You want to roll until... You want to roll and also add the um, glue as you're rolling because you this is what is holding it together. So you do that until you get... All the way to the end. I'm surprised I'm not making as much of a mess as I normally do. Um, but you just keep going. And then you want to make sure that when you close it, that it is like closed tight, that nothing is sticking up, and that it completely dries. This is another reason why I like that 30 second glue because I feel like that glue dries so much faster. So you don't get all that extra stuff all over your hand as you're trying to, to close this up. And this actually takes a little skill. It took me a minute to even learn how to do this without making such a mess. But you'll see what the end result is in a second. Okay, I'm almost at the end. I'm just going to tighten this up some and just get this all the way to the end and then show you what... It looks like this is what it looks like initially. Should be a big circle. I probably could have had it a little tighter. But just wanted to make sure that it was going to fit. And then I'm going to show you what the next step is. So this next step, we are going to take <laughs> the um, flat iron. And then you're going to place your closure in between these two. You see how it kind of flattens. And you just want to press it down until it gets flat. Again, this is your closure. Sometimes if the weft is big, you have to cut it down a smidge, just a smidge um, after you flatten it. But if you tightened it well, you should not have to do that even if the weft is tighter. I mean, if the weft is thick, you should, you should not have to cut it. Um, so every now and then you have to, depending on how tight you did it. So right now I'm just kind of just holding it. It's going to be hot because you're holding, you're putting all that heat onto that glue. So you want to press it, press it, press it so that it gets as flat as possible. I kind of gave up because I was tired of holding on, but you can see that it's getting flatter as we go through this process. And I'm loving that a lot of the, the look that I'm going for is kind of already there. I'm just going to go in and cut down some of those stragglies after I put this piece in or put this last, clo this last closure piece in. Um, so I was just admiring my work a little bit. All right, now that we are done, you can see how flat it is and how it's going to go. See that? Look how cute that is. Yes, so I'm going to add some glue and then we are going to place it back where we seen and then you want to make sure. Now, my part is not the straightest. Ignore that. Um, But you want to get it as close to your part if you have one so that it aligns with the rest of the hair that's in there. And then you can just see how flat it is like and how it's up against. The hair, you don't see anything. And that's how I close off my, what is it, half bulb, I guess is what it's called. Okay, so now I'm just going to make sure that it is on there, that it is not going to flat off. And now it is time to cut these stragglies and give this bulb some type of a shape. Now, I do my hair like this often, so I kind of know where I want it to lay, um, but you want to be careful. Normally, I use the other little razor thing, but I didn't have one, so I decided that I was going to go ahead and just use these. 
scissors. My husband will be cussing me out right now if he see me using these shears like that. But nevertheless, I am giving this some shape. I'm actually going to cut into this a little bit just to soften it up just a smidge for those little soft layers that I want to be in there as well. So remember what I said about that 10 inch and 12 inch hair. This is kind of where that part comes into play where I don't have to do a whole bunch of cutting because that 10 inch hair is already laying a certain way. So I'm kind of using that as the end of that where it kind of gets like a little frayy. I'm using that as a guide to go down into the 12 inch hair. So I think I kind of got it where I want to, and I already know that eventually this is even probably going to be cut higher in a couple of days or so, but I'm just kind of going in just to see, like making sure that there's not no straggly pieces that are going to look crazy after I flat iron it. I do not put curl in it. I literally just kind of silk it through, but let's see what that is going to really look like. So I've seen a little piece that I'm going to go ahead and cut before I pull out this flat iron. And now I'm going to just flat iron this. This is also going to allow me to see if there's, are any, if there's any stragglies or anything. I am not bumping this. I'm just taking the straightness out of it. And I do that all the way through. This is the back. I'm loving it. Nothing on my neck at all. And this is the final result. Let me know what you think.